Hello and welcome to how to use the physics constraint. The physics constraint uh, component is a very useful component in allowing you to constrain physics based objects in their sense of their movement and rotation. So we're going to go through a, a brief demo of how to use it. It has loads of settings on it. Um, so I'm going to go through the basics here and then you will see in future videos me using it more for more specific cases. So I've got this hanging object here and my goal is I want this small cube here to dangle from this top cube here. So I only want like basically half of the mesh here, the half of the actor here sorry, to be physics based. So we've got these two static meshes. I'm going to go and click on cube one, which is the small one. And I'm going to make sure I've ticked on simulate physics. Once you've done that, we're going to go to add component and choose a physics component constraint. And with the physics constraint here, um, it will look like it spawns like so, and it has this like uh, ball shape colors here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that where we want it to anchor the constraint to. So this is dangling from the top. So I'm going to put this anchor at the top here. Next, I'm going to change what is the ability of this physics constraint. And what is it constraining? So on the right hand side with it selected, you can choose which components it's attached to. Now we only have to attach it to one here. So we're gonna attach this one here. And we're gonna type in cube one. And you can see it appear with this like a uh, red line and a red box surrounding our cube here. This indicates that it is now tethered to our physics constraint. Now if I scroll down further, I've got loads of options. We're not gonna go through them all, don't worry. Um, but we're going to show you a couple and that is going to be talking about today the angular limits This is probably the most common one you'll be using The angular limits indicates how freely can it move in all angles and You have the naming of swing one motion swing two motion and twist motion But the easiest thing to do is take a look at this shape here You see in the viewport and if you lock these you'll see what happens here. They turn off these different discs each disc represents the angle of movement of each uh, direction. So this one here, swing one motion, handles this horizontal motion on the flat plane. Um, so it will rotate around this. Now, what we're going to do is turn that one off because I want it to swing, not spin. So if I turn that one off and then turn swing two motion onto three. And here we have some free movement where it can swing back and forth along this path here. I can then go to twist motion and choose free for that one as well. And then I've got the intersecting other angle here. So if I hit compile on this and then go back to our game and have this in the world here, I'll be able to walk into this object and it should bounce around like so. And that is the general gist of the physics constraint. Now there are loads of tools available to us to customize how the physics on here work. And as I said, we'll go over them in a lot more detail in their own individual videos, but to give you a little uh, tease here of what you can do, go to the constraint. You can obviously constrain multiple physics components together, so you can like a chain of them, and also use bones in this case for skeletal meshes. You can also go down and enable linear limits, so how much they can slide. So for example, if you're doing like a draw coming out of a cupboard, the draw can only extend out a certain amount maybe, or only in one direction at least. Angular limits we saw, you can actually do limited for all of these, and limited allows you to specify the range. I might set to 360 and the free, but you can customize that and tweak that to your liking. And finally down here, you've got motors. Now motors will continuously drive the the, uh, the physics uh, physics constraint sorry to a set uh, in this case angle, but also can do positions as well. And you'll see more examples of that in another video coming out too. So this is the physics constraint. Like you've got loads of uses, especially in um, VR. It's very useful in VR type of stuff. And um, and but definitely try it out. Definitely try some things out and see what you can make with it. 
That'll do for this. If you want to see more how-tos and other videos by myself, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. We can donate just one dollar and get access to all my videos before anyone else. Big shout out and thank you to everyone who has donated and supported me. This really is amazing, so thank you so, so much. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.